Hi, welcome to our week six quiz tutorial. Uh, the first thing I asked you guys to do this week was to write the equation of a line passing through two points in slope inter in point slope, slope intercept, and standard form. So to do really anything, we're going to need to get slope first. Okay, so remember that slope is rise over run, so it's change in y over change in x. Our y coordinates are 5 and negative 3, so change in y would be 5 minus negative 3 over change in x, so that's negative 4 and 1, so negative 4 minus 1 would be change in x. Uh, just doing the math really quick for that, 5 minus negative 3, it's the same thing as 5 plus 3, which is 8. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, so our slope is over negative 5, or 8 negative 8 fifths. In point slope form, you get to pick a point, and it's really up to you which one you like better. Uh, personally, I think I would probably pick the second point because the numbers are slightly smaller. Okay, but it's up to you. You can pick either one. If I'm picking that second point for my point slope form, uh, my x coordinate is 1 and my y coordinate is negative 3. So we're going to do y minus the y coordinate. So y minus negative 3. It's the same thing as y plus 3 equals your slope, which is negative 8 fifths, parentheses, times x minus the x coordinate, so that would be x minus 1. And that's what point slope form looks like. You can certainly use the other point if you'd like to. If you use the other point, the point slope form would be y minus 5 equals negative 8 fifths times x minus negative 4, which is the same thing as x plus 4. So that's what the other point, point, point slope form would look like. Uh, to go from point slope form to slope intercept form, really what you're doing is distributing first and then getting your y by itself second. Okay? So distributing first, I would have negative 8 fifths times x. So that would be negative 8 fifths x. And then I'll have negative 8 fifths times negative 1, which would be positive 8 fifths. Then if I want to get my y by itself from here, I would just subtract 3 from both sides. Okay. So I'll have y equals negative 8 fifths x. And then I need to actually do the, the subtraction over here. So 8 fifths minus 3. I do need a least common denominator. So that would be 8 fifths minus 3, which is 15 fifths. So 8 fifths minus 15 fifths is negative 7 fifths. So I'll have equals 8 fifths x minus 7 fifths. And that's slope intercept form. To go from slope intercept form to standard form, first thing I really need to do is get x's and y's on the same side. So I'm going to do first is add 8 fifths x to both sides. So I'll have 8 fifths x plus y equals negative 7 fifths. And then in standard form, all of our coefficients should be integers. So to get it from here to where everything's an integer, I'm going to multiply by my least common denominator, which is 5. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. 5 times 8 fifths x is just 8x. 5 times y would be plus 5y equals negative 7 fifths times 5 is negative 7. So that's our standard form. Okay. Switching gears for number 2 is all about exponent rules. And made you a little note that simplified expressions should have only positive exponents. So if you have any negative exponents, we'll have to deal with them at some point. Okay. But the first one is pretty straightforward. Everything's just multiplied together. Uh, 2x squared y to the fifth times 3x squared y. Okay? So you're multiplying everything together. So multiplying 2 times 3 would be 6. Then you're multiplying x squared times x to the seventh. Well, x squared is x times x. So that's just 2x's. x to the seventh is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7x's. So all in all, that would be 9x is multiplied together, or x to the ninth. And that's why you add your exponents when you're multiplying them together. It's the same idea with your y's. You're doing y to the fifth times y. 
So that's five y's, one, two, three, four, five y's. Then you multiply by one more y, which would give you y to the sixth. Okay. Putting everything together, your answer should be 6x to the ninth y to the sixth. With the second one, part b, we've got 4a to the negative third, b to the fifth, and the whole thing is squared. So with everything being squared, it means that you're multiplying that entire parenthesis by itself. Okay? Uh, so really you're squaring every single thing. You're going to do 4 times 4. You're doing 4 squared, which would be 16. You're going to do a to the negative third squared, which would be a to the negative sixth. And you're doing b to the fifth squared, which would be b to the tenth. Okay? So just reminding you guys, if you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you do multiply them together. So you're doing 3 times negative, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, 5 times 2 is 10. Okay? The last thing we need to do, though, is deal with our negative here. So we do have a, ne a negative exponent, which just means it's in the wrong place and needs to be moved. Uh, so instead of being in the numerator like everything else, we're actually going to move that to the denominator. So we're going to have 16b to the 10th in the numerator and a to the 6th in, in the denominator since the a to the 6th had a negative exponent. And then we're done. All right, the last one is probably the most fun one because it has a lot going on. I at least only gave you guys one of these. So my advice, if you'd like it, uh, when you have something more complicated like this one, is to just focus on one thing at a time, okay? So... I'm just going to focus first on distributing. So when I have everything raised to the same exponent, I can distribute that exponent, and I'm just going to focus on doing that distributing first. Okay? So distributing the negative 3 to the first parenthesis, I'll have 6 to the negative 3rd. I'm going to have x to the negative 3rd. And my high square to the negative 3rd, which would be y to the negative 6. Again, remember to multiply your exponents together. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And the denominator, first set parentheses, isn't getting raised to anything, so it's just going to stay like it is. So I'll have 4x to the negative 4th, y to the 6th. The second set of parentheses is raised to the negative 1st power, so I'm going to distribute that exponent. So it would be 2 to the negative 1st, x to the 3rd raised to the negative 1st, which would be x to the negative 3rd y to the negative fifth raised to the negative first, so negative five times negative one is positive five. Okay, and then after that I'm done with all my distributing, which is good. The next thing I think I'll oh, focus on is just moving around negatives. So if, it, if they have a negative exponent, it just means they're in the wrong place. If they're in the denominator, they want to be in the numerator. If it's in the numerator, it wants to be in the denominator if it has a negative exponent. Okay. So just taking things one by one and moving things as needed, okay? So a 6 to the negative third has a negative exponent, so it wants to be moved. So we'll move that to the denominator. The x to the negative third also has a negative exponent, so we'll move it to the denominator. The y to the negative sixth also has a negative exponent, so it moves to the denominator. Uh, down here, I've got just a plain old 4. Happy where it is. It's 4 to the first. It's a positive exponent. It stays in the denominator. The x to the negative fourth has an exponent, so it wants to move. So I want to move it to the numerator. The y to the sixth has a positive exponent. It gets to stay where it is. It gets to stay in the denominator. The 2 to the negative first has a negative exponent, so we'll move it up to the numerator. And 2 to the first is just 2. Uh, the x to the negative third has a negative exponent, so I'm going to move it up the numerator. And the y to the fifth has a positive exponent, so it's happy where it is. It'll stay in the denominator. Okay, so you notice I'm just focusing on one thing and I'm doing it well. Okay. After this point, I think I can do a lot of multiplication. I'm just going to multiply everything in the numerator together, everything in the denominator together, and get things simplified and condensed a little bit. Okay. In the numerator, I've got x to the 4th times 2x to the 3rd, so that would be 2x to the 7th, because 4 plus 3 is 7. In the denominator, I've got 6 to the 3rd and 4, just kind of looking at my numbers here. And if you put that in your calculator, if you do 6 to the 3rd times 4, 
in your calculator, you're going to get 864. Uh, let's see, x to the third is my only x, so I'll also have an x to the third in the denominator. Then I've got a lot of y's. So I've got a y to the sixth, another y to the sixth, and a y to the fifth. Multiplying everything together, I should add my exponents. So 6 plus 6 is 12. Plus 5 would be 17. So I'll have y to the 17th in the denominator. Okay. From here, it's a lot of simplifying. Uh, so one thing I notice is that 2 and 864 are both divisible by 2. So I'm just going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. Okay. I can also simplify my x because I've got x to the 7th on top x to the third in the denominator. So you can either think about that as dividing at three of the x's, or you can think about it as your quotient rule, where you do x to the seventh over x to the third and subtract your exponents together. Uh, so seven minus three would be four. Okay. So let's focus on both of those things. So looking at the numbers, two divided by two is one. And x to the seventh divided by x to the third is x to the fourth. Okay. In the denominator, uh, 864 divided by 2 is 432. And if I do x to the third divided by x to the third, there's no more x's left in the denominator. But I will still have the y to the 17th in the denominator. And I'm finally done. Okay, this helps you guys a little bit. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week and a great spring break.